And hello everyone, welcome back to another Pascal tutorial. So in this tutorial we'll be taking a look at maths, a little bit of basic math. We're not going to jump head first into the math libraries and stuff like that. I just want to show you how you can execute some mathematical functions. So let's for once just change this to say something else. I'm going to call this main program. I think that looks a bit better now. I just wanted to change it since we never touch it. And in here we can declare two variables, an integer and a double. A double is the same as a real. However, I believe a double can contain double the values, so double the length of items after the same, after the, the dot. So let's say if a real can only contain 7.1514. Seven like this. Then a double will be able to contain seven point one five one four nine two three uh, double this amount. So four here, four here. And this isn't a real life scale. A real can hold a lot more, but I believe a double is double the amount of a real. Cool. So let's begin with very basic math. Let's say we have right line. Here we can say one plus five. We know this is very basic math. If I were to run this, we'll get six. We know this works. You can do the same. You can say minus and this will work. It can go into the negatives, but it will work. So here we can go 10 if you don't want it to go into the negatives. Now it will be five. So plus and minus very simple to work with. Now I'm just going to make X. Uh, let's make this nine. Why not? And let's say y becomes x divided by 3. So this right here we can use for division. So if we were to now display y, so we're saying 9 divided by 3. And now we display y, we get 3.0000000. And go 3.3, .3, and that will give us another cool value. Another thing you can look at is if we were to say 9 div. Three. This value here, this div, will produce an integer. So this division symbol will always produce a real or a floating point value, or a double. So this divide here, this will produce something like 3.1415, whatnot. This right line here, with this div, this div here will always produce an integer value. So if we were to print this out, we'll get three. If we were to say 3.3, .3, print it out, we'll actually get an error because this can only work with integers. So if we were to say x div 3, we'll get 3. But it can only work with integers. I cannot say y div 3 because then it will kind of break. So div is if what you can use if you want to get an integer and you don't want a double or a real and you need an integer then div is the way to go. Similar, we can of course also use times. So let's say we have 10 times three, which is this asterisk, that means times. Then we get 30, or we can say negative two times three and we'll get negative six. So simple times, very easy. And then last, but definitely not least, mod or modulo. Modulo is very special. A lot of people do struggle to grasp the concept at the start, but Modulo is actually very powerful. It's very similar to division, but it is not division. Let's say we have nine Modulo three. This value here, and we can actually prove it by just going here. Nine Modulo three will give us zero. So instead of three, this will give us zero. If we were to say Div, you'll notice this gives us three. When Modulo does it, it gives you the remainder. Some people don't like it when others say Modulo gives you the remainder because it's actually a little bit more complex than that. But basically, nine divided by three has no remainders, so it's zero. But let's take an example such as 10 mod three. Now, if you were to do 10 divided by three, you would get 
free point free 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 no no, no. yeah 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 you'll, you'll get free point free 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 i think now if you might remember that when you were in school you had to rewrite this as free res one you might remember this from school i used to do this in school where we had to say free res one that means there's one left because free six nine but then free cannot be divided into one anymore so it's just free six nine with one left over this res one this is modulo so now here we can say 10 mod 3 and we'll get 1. So that's the remainder left over after division. Or we can say 10 modulo 4. Now we'll have 2 because 4, 8 and then there's 2 left that cannot be divided into 4 without having to become a value such as this. You might not see the use for something like modulo right now. But I recommend once you learn or know about if statements, you should go search up fizzbuzz. Fizzbuzz is a solution that can be solved with modulo. For example, the idea is, let's say every time we are counting down or up to 100, it doesn't matter if you're going up or down. So you want to go up or down to the value 100. So that's you're starting at zero. So zero to 100. Then for Let's go one, just to make it easy. Then for each value that it can be divided by three, you should say fizz. For each value that can be divided by five, you should say buzz. And if a value can be divided by three and five, you should say fizz buzz. This solution might seem very simple at first. But once you get into it, you'll have hundreds of lines of code just to do this, where if you use Modulo, it can easily be slimmer down to maybe 10 lines of code, if not less. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all again in the next Pascal tutorial.